We're going to go do the third practical, but before we do that, uh, the third practical is a little bit shorter and more interactive. So I just want to take a few minutes first to kind of show you where all the resources are uh, for using Hail. So if we just go to hail.is, which is on all your stickers, this is the website. And so what do we have here? Um, the forum right here is where you can come ask us questions. Uh, so we just make like a little account. We have different categories here. Like we have feature requests. If there's something you want to do in Hail that's not easy right now, we'd love to know what that is. Uh, science questions. Most of our things are, most of our questions are in help right now because people mostly just need like how do I do this particular computation? Uh, but this is a great place. We answer questions quite quickly here. Um, definitely feel free to reach out. There are no dumb questions. Um, separately, um, uh, documentation is also here. So if you click docs, there's the old version and the new version, which is point two. So you click point two. And then we kind of just have like a mess of different things here. The tutorial would walk you through something similar. This GWAS tutorial is like a shorter version of the thing we did today. But then there's some general tutorials uh, that are also interesting to go through where we look at movie data. Um, Python API here is where like all of the, like these are all the functions that are on matrix table. This is where all this documentation lives. Um, one, thing, one thing I think is kind of helpful for new users is we have cheat sheets. Kind of like you, maybe if you use like dplyr or pandas or something, you've had one, you've seen one of these cheat sheets before, just like a helpful reference when you're first starting. And then we also have an installation guide here. So like right now we're letting you guys use Hail on a notebook, you didn't have to set anything up, but if you want to use it locally or on a cluster, you'd have to install Hail. And we just have a little walkthrough of how to do that here. If you have any problems with that, that's also fine to throw questions on the discuss forum. Cool. Okay, I just wanted to get that logistics out of the way. With that, practical three. So for this practical, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, PCA and plotting and do like a little interactive activity where we want to see, based on the PCs, can we uh, infer what the, an like if we don't look at the ancestry labels and we just look at PC plots, can we figure out what the ancestry of a particular sample actually was? So just like before, we import Hale, we import Boca for plotting, uh, init, output notebook. Great. So we're going to read in the data from the previous practicals. So we're going to read in the PC scores that we wrote out as a Hale table. I'm going to read in the sample annotations. Okay. And now we want to take the first four PCs from the PCA table. Pretty sure when we did that, we uh, calculated 10 PCs, but we only want to look at four right now because we're plotting. Um, so to do that, we're going to use, so PCA scores is a table. A table has a select function, like select some fields. And the fields we want to select, we're actually going to define some new ones. We say PC1 is defined as look at the PCA scores table, look at the scores uh, field. In fact, let's add a describe in here so that we can see, remind ourselves what we have. So if I do PCA scores dot describe widget equals true, right? We have a table where each row has a sample ID and this scores array. And this is an array of length 10 with the first 10 PCs in it. So we're making this new table, HT, that has four fields, PC1, PC2, PC3, and PC4, by indexing into this scores array. And then we are taking that table, and we are using the fact that we have the sample annotations here in SA, and we have the sample ID here in the S field, and so we're saying, get the phenotype by looking up each sample in the sample annotations table. So if I run this, you know what, let's add a describe. You'll see we now have a table that has sample ID and then four PCs and the phenotype. 
So any questions so far? So far so good? Okay, so the five populations present as we discussed are listed here. Uh, there are three letter codes for, from the thousand genomes. You can read more about it here. So what we wanna do, what's very helpful with PCA, when you do PCA is to make a plot of uh, like PC1 versus PC2 to see if there's clustering uh, present. So let's do that. We have hl.plot.scatter, which we've seen before, and we're saying here plot PC1 against PC2, put this on the x-axis, put this on the y-axis. Um, on each point, if I mouse over, I wanna be able to see the superpopulation, and this is just telling you how to make, to make the graph. And so we do PC1 versus PC2, we do one versus three, and then we do two versus four. And then this, because these plots come from Boca, which is this plotting library, you can use things like boca.layouts.gridplot to say, I wanna arrange these plots into a grid. And then I show that. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can actually see these. So now we have this plot of PC1 versus PC2, and then on the labels here, we have the different ancestries. So as you can kind of see, there's kind of clusters, like there's this green cluster that has a little bit of orange in it, but all the greens are here at least, which are the East, Eastern Asians. And then we have the uh, African cluster over here, we have a European cluster over here. So like in this plot, some of them are clearly clustered and some of them aren't, but that's why we have a couple plots. In this one, we can see kind of a cluster of the purples better, and the purples are the Americans. And then in this PC2 versus PC4 plot, there's also some clustering. So this is good, because in the last practical, we said that the point of doing PCA was to kind of get these, like a numerical representation of ancestry, and by plotting them with the labels, we can see that we actually did a pretty good job. These uh, these principal components do encode ancestry at some level because we can see the clusters forming in the plots. Does anyone have any questions about this? Okay. So now we're gonna do sort of a little learning game where the idea here is based on these plots, I'm gonna give you some new samples and then we wanna see if we can and we know what their values are for PC1, PC2, PC3, PC4. We wanna see if we can predict what uh, superpopulation they're from. So this function right here is just, uh, I lost the connection for a second. So good. This function right here is a function we defined that you can look through the details as like a good example of like a slightly complicated Hale expression. But basically all it's doing is uh, checking whether the superpopulation that we're going to guess a sample comes from is the one it actually comes from. So like we have this true labels table here that we're not gonna look at that contains the true populations of a set of samples and this check function is gonna check our guesses. This will make a little bit more sense when we go a little bit further here. So, yeah, so your job here is to expand the code that's written down here to help us uh, re-identify the population labels. So like if I run this little expression, okay, so what we've done here is we have the unmasked sample, uh, we're trying to compute unmasked, this new field that is the, uh, the superpopulation we're guessing and we're computing that based on the PCs. So we're using this construct called case when, which is basically like if, else if, else if, else if, else in Python. So we're saying the unmasked field is equal to, and then we do case to like start a series of like if else statements. And then we say when PC2 is greater than 0.2, and, so in, in Hale you have to use this little and squiggle symbol, you can't use the, uh, like the word A and D like you can in Python. Um, so we say if PC2 is greater than 0.2 and PC1 is less than zero, then our guess is that this is someone from the Eastern Asian superpopulation. Can you make it bigger, John? Oh, sure. Make it smaller for the plots, and now it's too small. 
Okay. And so the idea here is we want to take some time to go through and see if, based on looking at the plots, you can fill in these dot, dot, dots um, with different cases like this to just see if we can label all of the samples correctly. And every time you try one of these things, you can run the cell again, and it'll tell you how well you did. So like, we haven't labeled any Africans yet or Europeans yet and whatnot, and that makes sense because so far all we're doing is labeling Eastern Asians. Um, but there were no Eastern Asians left unlabeled. So like we got, like this condition was sufficient to notice that people were of East Asian ancestry. <coughs> um, and now we have to come up with conditions for the other ones. Does anyone have any questions? Why not use just a normal classifier? <coughs> um, this is mostly just like an exercise to practice writing hail expressions and talk about case one and whatnot. Um, but also, like, for something as simple as this, um, just using like an if-else for these five categories is mostly sufficient. Certainly if you were doing like a reductionized thing, you might want something more complicated though. Just curiosity, the three scattered plots you choose are the best one, or we should explore them? Because for me, I don't really see a clear separation between populations of them. Um, sure. So I'm not promising that these are the best ones. Like one versus two is a very standard thing to do and theoretically should capture the most variation. And then there's a one versus three and a two versus four. But for instance, there's no two versus three yet. So certainly, yeah, experiment, make a new plot. You can use more PCs if you think that would be helpful. You can go back up here and like pull in PC five and six. This is mostly like an opportunity to think about what you've, like what we've gone through today, explore, a little bit more interactive, so me and Kumar and Patrick can walk around and answer your questions. Great. Other questions? Uh, also, one brief note, if you work with a neighbor, your plots may not look exactly the same. Uh, this is because our PCA algorithm is randomized and non-deterministic. So things may be flipped around any axis. So keep that in mind. That's a good point. Other questions? All right, so why don't we take a few minutes to experiment with this. Uh, Kumar and Patrick and I will be around to answer any questions. <laughs>